This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and I've had a really long month, two months, however long it's been since this year started. So rather than doing what I normally do and analyzing art or criticizing corporations for using AI or examining serious ethical questions, I've decided to give myself a little treat and just let myself rant about nonsense. Do you guys remember those videos where I talked about the top 10 best and worst anime art tropes and messily doodled Celestia as them? Well, we're back, baby, this time with animation tropes. Well, Western animation, I realize anime is animation. Off to a good start, you get my point. In today's video, I'm going to poorly illustrate what are, in my humble and probably controversial opinion, the top 10 worst Western animation art tropes, and inevitably enrage at least 10% of you watching who absolutely love the things I'm about to roast. Buckle up. But first, as always, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, a longtime partner of the channel. Squarespace is, in my opinion, the best website building and hosting platform out there, and I would know I've been using them for years to build and host both my Duchess Celestia portfolio site, the most important thing for any artist, and the site for my art studio, Royal Starship Studios. What drew me in long before they sponsored any of my videos was their ridiculously wide library of templates, because you never need to start from scratch and put hours into trying to make your site look good to no avail. No matter what you're looking for, they have a template for you to start from that suits any and all of your needs, from portfolios and online stores to blogs and landing pages. And editing those templates to make the perfect site is easy, too, because their godsend of an editing system, Fluid Engine, has an incredibly intuitive, easy-to-use drag-and-drop system that lets you customize every single part of your site. And for artists looking to monetize their work, look no further. With e-commerce and print-on-demand integration, Squarespace makes it easier than ever to turn your site into a fully functioning online store, so you can put your work on merch or even sell access to premium content via members-only spaces. Anything you need your site to do, Squarespace can help you bring it to life easily and beautifully with their vast array of templates and tools, something that you can find out right now by going to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia, linked in the description, and use code duchesscelestia for 10% off your first domain purchase. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and please go check them out. Alright, on to the video. Time to piss off half the art community and roast some art tropes. As always with these videos, I can't stress enough that these are completely subjective and for fun. I'm not legitimately criticizing these tropes as being sincerely bad. I'm not saying animation that utilizes them is bad. I'm not saying literally anything more than I don't like them, here's why. Not only are these just my opinions, these are like my lukewarm opinions. They're things I dislike to the degree that you would dislike rush hour traffic or a long line at GameStop, not like global warming or getting stabbed. I don't know why I use those examples. I've never driven a car, been stabbed, or been to a GameStop. I, anyway, the point is I'm not saying these tropes are objectively bad or worthy of legitimate criticism, I'm just saying I dislike them and think it's funny to mock them. Which is exactly what I'm about to do. It's for fun, please don't take it seriously, I'm not calling your favorite show bad for including any of these tropes. You'd think this wouldn't be necessary to say, but I've done two of these now and I know all too well that it is. But I am a page into this script and I haven't even started yet, so let's fix that. Starting strong with one that I'm sure will piss off a very non-zero number of you, the number one worst animation trope on my list is, don't kill me, hear me out, the bean head. Let me explain. I know the bean head gets unjustified amounts of hate just for being associated with the Cal Art style. I made a whole video about it, and of course I think that's dumb. But it gets so much hate that at this point I'm sick of seeing it because I'm sick of hearing about it. Do I think it's a bad art style or a bad trope artistically? No. When it first showed up in shows I watched, I thought it was cute. I still think it's cute, if not a little overdone, but that's the case for everything that gets popular. But at this point, it's not even about how it looks. It's about how ridiculously polarized people are about it. Is the bean head cute, or is it too simple and overused and lazy? Apparently they can't be drawn anymore without sparking a heated debate where both sides think they're objectively correct and not just stating opinions. And that is why I hate the bean head trope. Because people will not shut up about it. And now you can't even discuss Western animation without at some point stating your inevitably controversial stance on bean heads. Visually, in my opinion, bean heads did nothing wrong. Social Beanheads are the bane of my existence. Society ruined them. And yes, I understand the irony of me saying people won't shut up about their opinions on beanheads while not shutting up about my opinions on beanheads. When I say society, I include myself. Number two, conversely, does commit a crime visually on an artistic basis, and it's conjoined eyes. Sonic fans, I'm sorry, I respect you and I think the franchise is great, but I personally just physically cannot abide by the eyes that are just a connected singular form like that. Like they just bleed into 
each other and function as one autonomous being. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about the conjoined eyes that makes my brain reject them as physically unacceptable and emotionally unforgivable, but I just, I can't. The other version where the eyes are like not one conjoined thing but still attached to each other is less egregious to me, but I still deeply dislike it. It's purely my personal opinion and nothing objectively wrong with the style. I just feel like it's not the hottest take to say that eyes should be separate. But others would argue that it's not the hottest take to say that eyes shouldn't be anime levels of exaggeratedly large, demolishing my entire style. So I once again should reiterate the insignificance of my dumb opinions when it comes to assessing whether a trope is good or not. Next up, number three, the bulging stuff. Look, I get it. Animation is supposed to be exaggerated, sometimes to a deliberately ridiculous degree. And I'm not criticizing this for being unrealistic, but just because it's gross, weird, uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't even fully understand why I hate these tropes so much. But when characters have their eyes bulge literally out of their faces when they see something as shocking as a level-headed take on Twitter, or have their hearts beat out of their chests when they see Benedict Cumberbatch or whoever's hot now, I don't know, I'm living in 2012. I just hate it. It makes me so uncomfortable. It's not based on anything logical. I'm consciously aware that the bulging hearts and eyes are effective visual tools when it comes to communicating love and shock, and I know I should like them as a result but I just can't. It's the same with things like characters' stomachs ballooning up when they eat a lot or their cheeks flapping wildly when they're going really fast. I get it, it's visually effective storytelling, but something about it makes my brain immediately recoil into itself, like it just touched something sticky but it doesn't know what it is and it really just wants to wash its hands as quickly as possible. It's, it's icky. I feel like a toddler saying that, but I just can't find a better word for how this trope makes me feel inside. There's nothing wrong with it, honestly. There's something wrong with how my brain responds to it. And it's been responding that way since I was a kid watching Looney Tunes. Number four is what TV tropes refers to as the fourth wall breaking portrait, which is when a character that's animated really simply and cartoonishly shows a portrait or other visual depiction of themselves that's ridiculously realistic, to the point that it doesn't even resemble them with any semblance of believability. It gets a pass when it's acknowledged comedically, like if the character makes a joke and says something like, wow, that looks nothing like me, about a portrait of them done to look as realistic as they would be in our reality. I'll forgive it as a gag then that gave me a little chuckle. But when it's just like completely unacknowledged and the character just acts like, yeah, what? That That's what I look like. I just, no, it's not. You're, you're my cartoon little guy. Don't make me imagine you as an actual human being. I don't want to think of Peter Griffin looking like a real dude. Look at this. No, it's such a petty gripe. I know. I just find it so immersion breaking and jarring. I, I don't know. So many of these are just me being nitpicky and this is definitely one of them. Speaking of nitpicky, number five is so nitpicky that my wife even called me out for how nitpicky it it is while I was drawing it, but I will die on this hill, and it's animals not being drawn to scale. Dogs the size of humans, mice the size of children, just impossibly large animals when compared to the humans they're interacting with. I get it, it's a style thing, it's not supposed to be realistic, and I don't even completely mind it when it's just animals being unrealistically large in comparison with humans. What irks me is when they're indiscriminately large compared to each other. Like if the dog and the mouse are big compared to the human, okay, fine. If the mouse is big compared to the dog? No, I reject that mouse. I love regular show, but regardless of whether or not I enjoy the show itself, my brain has some kind of mental block preventing me from believing that a bird is that much taller than a raccoon. It just can't accept that as a fundamental tenet of that reality. This is 100% just a me thing that my brain in particular rejects for no legitimate reason. And it's not like it's a trope that fills me with rage or something. It's more like the idle nagging irritation of a fire alarm beeping randomly every few minutes. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not bad. It just bugs me, probably more because of who I am as a person than anything else. Number six, however, I feel is vastly more legitimate, and it's the impossibly strong family resemblance. When a character looks so much like one of their parents that they're practically identical, with the only real differences being in clothing, hairstyle, or some small subtle age indicator like glasses or tiny wrinkles. No one looks so much like one of their parents that wearing their clothes would make them indistinguishable from each other. And there are so many better ways to visually communicate that characters are related than to make them share so many physical attributes that it's about as subtle as a punch in the face. Like, look at Ariel and her mom and tell me that's not a ridiculously lazy way to tell us as viewers that that's her mom. I'm sorry, I just, maybe it could get a pass if the only way there was to tell us that the characters are related was through illustration alone. But it's animation. There's a narrative. 
there's a story, there's dialogue. You can tell us they're related and let them just share a few reasonable visual traits. You don't have to make them clones separated by nothing but age. Number seven might be the one I get the least pushback for because I feel like there just aren't really that many diehard giant chin defenders out there. TV Tropes calls it the lantern jaw of justice, with characters like the Crimson Chin being a more extreme example and Superman being a tamer one. Basically, the manlier and more powerful the character is, the larger and squarer their chin is. Like, the level of power they possess is directly correlated with how gigantic and chiseled their jawline is. I don't know why this trope came into being. I mean, I know strong jawlines have always been associated with masculinity, but what does the size of the chin matter? Why does it have to take up half of their faces? Why can they only fight for justice if their chin is the size of a small plot of farmland? I hate it. It's the worst. And drawing the Justice Jaw Celestia may be one of the worst art crimes I've ever committed. Next up is number eight, and I'm a little torn about it. It's when an object that we as viewers are supposed to pay attention to is drawn conspicuously differently from every other object in its vicinity. I've seen this Steven Universe scene used as an example, where there's a pile of plushies, but they're all drawn in a generic clump, while the one plushie Steven's about to pick up is dramatically more well-lit, well-defined, and outlined than the rest, which is what I based the speed paint you're watching now on. But there are plenty of other instances, like when that one book on the bookshelf that a character's going to pick up is brighter, outlined, or highlighted, and it's just, again, it is visually effective, and it does its job of making the viewer look where you want them to. But I feel like it's just so lazy, like, there are better ways of accomplishing that that don't completely break all immersion and make the background feel less like an environment and more like a prop. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it feels like it's so obvious that it cheapens the rest of the scene. Number nine is one that I just don't understand on a fundamental level, and it's when a character gains weight and inexplicably also gets significantly taller. Like, they can't just have more weight on their frame, they also have to grow 10 inches in order to justify it. I don't even think this is motivated by any kind of fat phobia or anything like that, like so many other weight-related tropes. Because the characters do still get physically larger when they gain weight, and would probably look the same when it comes to actual proportions as they would if they were still their original height. So then, why? Why not just keep them their original height? How does gaining weight make them become giants? Is it just supposed to further exaggerate the weight gain? I, I don't know. I don't get it. And that's why I hate it. Not because I'm really against it visually, but because I just do not understand why it's done. And that lack of understanding makes it unbearable to me. Finally, number 10 might be one of the most controversial ones, because it's also the most relatively serious. And it's what I call the conventional makeover. If the character's female, they'll start out as some combination of chubby, small chest, or modestly dressed. If they're male, they'll start out either chubby or super lanky. In both cases, they'll probably have other traits that make them less conventionally attractive, like freckles, acne, or glasses. All of which I think is dumb to see as unattractive anyway, but whatever. And then, by the generosity and grace of the plot, they get a makeover, and suddenly the female characters lose weight, get bigger boobs, and their outfit becomes massively more revealing. And the male characters either lose weight or become absolutely shredded, and both magically no longer need glasses and have perfect skin. They basically just get a glow up that makes them conventionally attractive, implying that all of the traits they had before were bad. This is a trope that's omnipresent throughout all media, but in animation, I feel like it's worse because of the added freedom for exaggeration. In live action media, these makeovers have to be relatively realistic. The character can't go from being visibly overweight to suddenly skinny with perfect curves, or lanky to super buff, because the actor can't physically change that way. So they have to rely on simpler changes, like restyling their hair, getting rid of their glasses, and making their outfit more revealing or at least more flattering. In animation, those changes can be a lot more extreme and involve completely reshaping their bodies altogether, which means these conventional glow-ups can even more dramatically reinforce traditional beauty standards and make it seem like they needed to match them in order to be their best, most beautified selves. These makeovers always seem like they're telling us as viewers that the characters that are chubby, dorky, lanky, or modestly dressed can't be beautiful, which is not a cool message. I feel like characters should be able to be attractive regardless of how they're dressed or what their body looks like, and the only point of these makeovers is to suggest otherwise, and I just don't vibe with that. But that's it from me. I'm sure if you've made it this far, I've pissed you off with at least one of these takes, so please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. I'm curious, as always, to hear what you guys think of all these, as well as what tropes you guys hate in animation that I didn't mention, so please do let me know. Respectfully, obviously, because this is, again, just for fun and a completely subjective, opinion-based conversation. Don't fight each other about animated chins, and definitely don't fight me about them. I'll be back with 
a top 10 best animation art tropes video soon too, like I did with the anime art tropes. So keep your eyes out for that in the next few weeks too if you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Special thank you as always to channel members Cafe Soleil, Joseph Solomon, TC Pratt, Art of Amethyst Fable, Zelda Deverack 42, Abyss Reborn, Hierarchy Kyle, King Good James, and Cute Sailor Lovely, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Elangshi, Kim Yen, Crazy Asar, Gen Tong, Grayson Xavier, MG, Blah Mage, TC Pratt, Finn, Grim Spectre, Celine Merriman, Ash, Aldrichia, The Stray Dog, Ulura, Greg Noble, Decagon, Jenny Chan, Captain Reku, Ryan M. Williams, Catbus, Alec Rynakainen, Mac, Lucy Yamajiki, Selena Beebe, and Electa Mike, and I'll see you in the next one.